If Bob Corker has any honor, any decency, he should resign immediately. He should not let those words stand what he said about the he president wouldn't of the States. That was Steve Bannon, no doubt, channeling Donald Trump tonight in his reaction to Senator Bob Corker's attack on President Trump, an attack about which the president has so far remained uncharacteristically silent. The Washington Post is reporting tonight Senator Bob Corker's brutal assessment of Trump's fitness for office, warning that his reckless behavior could launch the nation on the path to World War III, also landed like a thunderclap inside the White House where aides feared possible ripple effects among other Republicans on Capitol Hill. Trump's Sunday morning Twitter tirade against Corker caught staffers by surprise, although the president had been brooding over the senator's comment for a few days earlier about Trump's chaos endangering the nation. One Trump confidant likened the president to a whistling teapot, saying that when he does not blow off steam, he can turn into a pressure cooker and explode. I think we are in pressure cooker territory, said this person. Joining us now, Chris Whipple, author of The Gatekeepers, How the White House Chiefs of Staff Define Every Presidency. And Chris, this is the presidency that is not defined by a White House Chief of Staff. Uh, uh, although we certainly have the image of General Kelly working overtime and obviously achieved some kind of success with Trump on this because he has not responded in any way to Bob Corker's attack and we know that has to be driving the president nuts. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's hard to overstate how, though, how dangerous and really frightening this whole situation is. You know, I've been talking to a lot of the former White House chiefs of staff in the last 48 hours, and they all really share Bob Corker's concerns that, that John Kelly is the thin line between Donald Trump and disaster for us all. And, and I got to tell you, every one of them can tell you in chilling detail about that night before the inauguration when the chairman of the Joint Chiefs comes in and explains the activation of the nuclear codes. And every one of them will tell you that there is really nobody who can countermand that order. And that's, that's the situation we find ourselves in right now. And that, and Bob Corker knows that, and Bob Corker has sources inside uh, the White House who are telling him, uh, as he said in the New York Times, about how uh, so everyone's time is spent, and Kelly's time in particular, trying to contain, simply contain the president. And that is a new phenomenon. Yeah. Well, Kelly, in my, in my opinion, made a big mistake when he said at the outset that he was only going to manage the West Wing. He wasn't going to try to manage Donald Trump. You, you know, Leon Panetta and James Baker, the two best in my mind, will tell you that the most important thing a White House chief does is he tells the president what he doesn't want to hear. Well, obviously he's and, doing that. Though. I mean, he's trying to do that because, and the proof of it is uh, that, that Bob Corker comes out and tweets about the president being in adult daycare and then gives this interview to the New York Times. And Donald Trump is absolutely silent. And we know that's we're, we're not... We're talking about, what, 24 hours? Yeah, but that's not, that is not the Trump method. The Trump method is to instantaneously hit someone who does that. But here, so here, someone's holding him back. Yeah, well, holding him back maybe in some instances, but, but here's, here's the problem. I mean, you've got a guy who uh, he may go on script for a day or two, but the next day he rips the script up, goes on an unhinged tirade. Well, that's the, that's the pressure and, cooker thing that we were hearing about in the Washington Post tonight from someone close to Trump, that if yeah. you do get to control him for a couple of days, it might be that you make things worse because then you get a bigger explosion a few days yeah. later. Well, maybe so, but I think, I mean, the real concern here is that you've got somebody who, again, said during the campaign, why do we have nuclear weapons yes. if we can't use them? Mm -hmm. uh, you've got somebody who it goes on these unhinged tirades. Uh, John Kelly doesn't seem to be able to stop those. Uh, you know, most, a really empowered chief of staff would have tried to take the phone away on day one. That obviously never happened. But in the meantime, he's got to be thinking about worst-case scenarios. He's got, you know, when Ronald Reagan was on the operating table in 1981, uh, in George Washington Hospital. James Baker went into a utility closet with Ed Meese. They discussed the 25th Amendment. Baker decided not to activate it because for two reasons. One, he, he knew it would look like a power grab by the vice president. Number two, he knew that Reagan was coming out of surgery. Donald Trump is not coming out of surgery. Right. This guy right. is not going to change. And John Kelly is really the thin line between Trump and disaster. Chris Whipple, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Hey.
Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.